This week started off with a terrible storm that resulted in a power outage that lasted all evening and well into the next day. Thankfully, it came back on the following day, and the mess and damage outside was minimal. An old rickety side fence had come loose with the high winds, and the boards needed to be replaced. An expensive project for such a small job, as the lumber prices here have more than doubled from previous years, and the wood is not as easy to come by. The chickens have a new home this week as I decided to move them across the property to avoid an overly zealous dog on the other side. The new makeshift fence I have made for them had started to lean from the intense high winds and needed more posts. I added on a little bamboo to the outside of their fence for shade and to add something rustic to help hide the wire fence underneath. This is an area that sits just on the very back of the property, but one you can see from both the pool area and garden. It is important to me for it to blend in and not become an eyesore of any kind. The hollyhocks are coming in already, as are the vining plants that climb our trellises. With time, it will all fill in and be as one could hope, a cohesive look. I have a big vision for this yard and garden area, and with so many projects I will likely be sharing the whole process of its transformation with you in the coming weeks and months as they unfold. burned so many candles during the outing that I decided to make more with what little beeswax I had left on hand, just to hold us over for the next storm that was coming. I will leave a full tutorial on how to make your own beeswax candles in the description box below.
For roughly five years, the chickens have been housed here. The soil is rich and perfect for planting. It is about 450 square feet, or 42 meters, to give you an idea of the area. It is a blank slate, and so far I've had a clothesline put up, and we have a trellis with a clematis already climbing it to mark sort of an entry to the space. We live on a country-style road with a fair amount of property between our houses, but I am not free from the sometimes inconsiderate neighbors one can deal with. Very recently, one such neighbor has decided to build a structure alongside the backside of my property that overlooks our pool area. For privacy and to deter from the unwanted side of it, I have come up with a plan to block it out. I found these willow trellises to top the fence line and have plans to add a violator on. But for now, I found another temporary solution that should work well until the vine grows tall enough to take it over. I'm installing a series of clips that will hold on to zip ties that will attach to the trellis and should keep it in place fine. Now that all the projects are done for the week, it's time to cook. I'm making shredded chicken with mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce. A meal I used to make often when my daughter was little. I will share the recipe with you in the description box below. For the cranberry sauce, I like to add a few slices of orange, their juice, some cinnamon, and brown sugar. a great recipe to use up any leftover chicken you might have. Today I'm using a large boneless breast that I will simmer with salt, pepper, and a bay leaf until fully cooked. As the chicken simmers and the cranberries cook away, I prepare the potatoes by peeling them, cutting them into equal pieces, and then boiling them on the stovetop.
For a side dish, I have some asparagus I got from the market earlier this week. I'm going to roast. Roasting helps bring out the flavor of the vegetables, and I find it to be my favorite way to make them. To make the gravy, I strain away the chicken liquid and make either a cornstarch slurry or a roux to thicken the gravy. And now it's time to finally relax and enjoy an evening at home. Thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.